Hey, welcome back to Blooming Beauty with Katie Messer. I'm Katie Messer. I uh, just feel like I'm supposed to talk about a topic that oftentimes is taboo and we just look past it and smile and don't really know where to go with it. But um, we're gonna talk about sexual assault and sexual harassment. So um, when I was in college, I had multiple jobs and one of my jobs, uh, I experienced sexual harassment from my employer and uh, I didn't want to lose my job, didn't know what to do, and anyway, just a whole range of emotions. But um, long story short, there's no excuse for it and uh, reach out to someone, uh, reach out to the police, reach out to a pastor, reach out to family, reach out to whoever um, because there's no excuse for it and your body is not public property and uh, you, you do not have to say you're sorry for feeling that you are violated because that's absolutely a violation. So uh, the Bible says in Psalm 139, 14 that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And because of that, you are not someone's property just because you are employed by them. Um, and I, I just encourage you, if you're experiencing it in, 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 in a PETA shop or in a coffee shop or whatever it doesn't make a right there either i've experienced it in those locations too um i've experienced it in america i've experienced it in uh, north africa i've experienced it in the middle east um uh, i had uh the hands of both of my toddler children when we were in the middle east and um i experienced sexual harassment there as well and my husband wasn't near me <clears throat> he was off to work and i just remember just that same feeling of just you're just a piece of meat and it could not be further from the truth. So ladies, may I encourage you, if you are experiencing sexual harassment or sexual assault, stand up and you make your voice known because you were not made to just be, you know, the, the napkin for every man to wipe his mouth on. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I don't care if a rap song has told you so. I don't care if a uh, if a magazine, you know, article has said, oh, well, that just makes you more powerful and now I'm going to... No, no, there's no place for that. And so then, you know, feelings of, you know, not being good enough or just being a piece of me at all, just, you know, put on 20 pounds and no one will, you know, do that anymore. Or, oh, I'll just start cutting or, oh, I'll think about suicide or, oh, you know, oh, I'll get back, you know, and then homicidal or whatever crazy thing, you know. Don't let yourself go there. Don't let yourself go there. Deal with it when it happens. Tell someone, reach out to the police, and don't worry about, oh, I don't want to hurt that person or, no, because if they're doing it to you, guess what? They're doing it to others. And may we be strong enough for not only ourselves, but for other people and to go, you know what? You're worth it too. This next girl that's going to be employed by this person, the next person that's going to go get a pita sandwich at 10 o'clock at night or whatever, after youth group, whatever, she's worth it too. So may we you know, realize that God has put us in 2000, what are we, 19 now for a purpose and for a reason. And it's not just for the benefit of ourselves. Ooh, not just for the benefit of ourselves, but for the benefit of those around us. May we be pointing others to Christ and helping them to value people as Christ values people. And that is that you are cherished, you are loved, you are precious, you're worth dying for. And he did it. And he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead on the third day. So that every horrible thing that you've experienced as a victim, as a whatever, there's healing from it. In Jesus' name. And I've experienced that healing. And I want to encourage anyone that's still in that place to reach out because you are not defined by your body. You're not defined by your bra size or your the inches around your waist or what shoe size you have. It doesn't matter. Your worth comes from the one who made you. And that's God. And he says that you are the crown of his creation, Ephesians 2 eight through 10, and that we are to do good works 
so that people will see them and that they will glorify our Father in heaven. So may you join me in being willing to stand up against sexual harassment, against sexual assault, and saying, not on my watch. And if we see it, may we pray for those enduring it. May we speak out for those that are enduring it. Because sometimes for those that are experiencing it, it's too much for them. They, they, they don't know what to do and they don't know how to stop. And they don't know how to stop it. So may we pray for wisdom and God to guide us. If we're to intervene in that moment, if we're to call the police later, how we're to, how we're to be involved. But that we would be people that care as Christ cared. And that we love people just like he cared about the woman on the well. He went up and spoke with her. He goes, go, go call your husband. I don't have one, she said. He says, I know, and the last five you've had aren't your husband's either. And she, he knew everything that this woman had done. Prostitution, whatever. Christ saw beyond that. He said, I don't define you by your sexual acts. I don't care what these other men say about you. He says, if you knew who was the one speaking to you and offering you living water, I know we're at a well for water. He says, if you knew who was speaking to you, you would ask him for water and he would give you water where you'd never thirst again, eternal life. And she ended up calling her, her uh, the, the man that she was with and, and the entire town in, in Samaria to come, come back and the disciples are going, why are you talking to her? She's a Samaritan. She's a half-breed. Christ goes, I came for all. I came for all. He goes, look at all these people. He goes, they need truth. He goes, there are so many that are hungry for truth, but very few that are willing to have conversations in depth and honesty. Church, may we be those people. May we be the ones to fulfill the Great Commission. There are people hurting. There are people hungry and needing to know that their value is beyond what their pimp or their employer or beyond what a magazine ad says or beyond what a, a, a pop song says. They need to know where their worth is. May we point them to Christ. May we prayerfully love on these people in Jesus' name. Because it's incredibly common. And does that make that right? Not hardly. But there is a great opportunity for each one of us to help be an advocate for positive change. So thanks for joining me today in the mountains at our little fireside chat. Because there is healing, there is hope, and there is restoration and real life in Jesus Christ. May you get to know him even this year, even this day. So let's pray. Father, we, um, we just come before you and we ask that, um, that you would just be glorified, that you would show yourself to those that are hurting, that you would um, just um, make yourself known, that you would show a way out, be it with the police or um, others, uh, pastors or family, or uh, just reaching out to someone who's safe, just to say, I, I don't know what to do, but I know something needs to be done. Please give them the courage and please give those that are listening the um, courage to make the needed change. We love you, Lord, and we thank you just for the healing that is available to all in your name. For those who have not put their trust in you, I just ask, Lord, that uh, you would stir hearts, just that they would be able to say even this day that they confess that they have tried to do things on their own and that they they turn away from everything else they've tried be it manipulation through sexual acts be it anger for uh, sexual assault be it the pursuit of money or happiness or anything apart from you lord it doesn't satisfy and it was never intended to Frankly, they were all intended to point us to you, to see that nothing else gets to that depth that we need in our souls. 
Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. God, I pray that anyone who is willing to say that they can't do it on their own, but Jesus, they believe that you are the Christ, that you are the Son of God, and that you came to save any and all, including them, including me. And that they would say, save me, Jesus. And I believe that you rose on, on the third day. Thank you for coming into my heart. Be the Lord and the boss and the leader of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you prayed that with me, may I encourage you to, to reach out and let me know. I would love to be able to encourage you and give you some resources um, of just being a new believer. Um, Biblehub.com is a, if you don't even have a Bible, it's a great free online Bible. I encourage you to start in uh, the book of John. So you just type in John 1 and um, just start reading uh, the Gospel of John. Get to know the one who loves you so, and that's Jesus Christ. Remember, bloom where God has you planted because he can redeem any story. If he can redeem mine, he can redeem yours. Because Romans 8.28 says that that he uses all things, all things, even the hard, even the shameful, even the things that just make you angry, and you wish that weren't part of your story. He uses all things for the glory, for, for the good of those who seek him, for his glory and for our good. So may we truly seek his will to glorify his name. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.